button. Yeah. I just wanted to show you. So this is 46 hours after the surgery and I can put my, I've been able to relatively quickly after surgery to lift up my legs. It really wasn't a problem for me. I was able to do something similar to this about 12 hours after surgery. And it's good, even if you don't lift your legs so far, it's good to wriggle your, your feet. I do that also with my legs straight, but maybe it's not on the camera if I straighten my legs. Can you see my feet? Yes. Good. So I do something like this. It's really good to help against um, stagnation. I think it's probably helped prevent blood clots a little bit. So you're sort of pumping um, your blood flow. So this is really good. I'm just going to put this down there. Be really careful and slow like a snail. So you can do it with both feet. And can you see the bolster? Yep. So I bought this bolster before from a yoga center because it's helpful to rest my, my legs on it. I know you probably can't see the feet, it's not so important. Okay, so you can lie like this, even if you don't have a bolster, you just put a firm pillow or two pillows there or normal um, sofa cushions will, do, will work. And you can just wriggle your feet. And if you do that often, even if maybe generally you're not feeling so fit yet, So you can lift just one leg up at a time. I think this is quite good. So I'm able to do this 46 hours after surgery. And I'm showing this to you so that you have some idea what you might be able to do. So when I want to get out of bed, I put both feet on the bed like this. I roll myself to the right side. And then I use my right arm to push myself up. It's not so easy. I still need Jason to help me a lot. And I won't show you now. Maybe next time. Okay, I'm now going to show you in a very unflattering way how I get a bit higher up on the bed and a little bit more into a seating posture. Obviously take your time. In this case, the bolster is actually in a way. So press into your feet a little bit like in the bridge posture. And you sort of inch your way upwards quite slowly. And every time you press up, that's actually good for your back. And I don't feel any strain on the front at all because I'm, I'm using back muscles and a little bit of my leg muscles. So pushing up, but then up here I have to kind of do something to try and create some space. So I can. Uh, so there you go, ta-da! I have arrived. Now I have some discomfort here and here. Um, it's just from a new position, from being in a different posture. And here it's like from the from the gas from the surgery. But now I'm able to grab my glass of water, in very awkward ways and have a drink. Yay! When you drink, be really careful that the water doesn't go down. Like after surgery, you're going to need to be careful that the water doesn't go in the wrong pipe because you can't cough. It's really difficult to cough. I do these little uh, uh, kind of coughs, but it would be hard to get water out. So I hope that was informative. So when somebody brings you a glass of water, ask them to only fill it three quarters full. Because if it is fuller, then it's diff really difficult to drink because you can't easily sit up fully. So um, if your glass is too full, you're either more likely to spill it or it is more likely to go down the wrong tube and you can easily accidentally swallow a bit of water in your breathing tube, which is really uncomfortable because you can't cough. 
instead of coughing, all I can do is go, <clears throat> and that's about it, because my muscles down there are all stressed out still from the surgery. So three quarters is ideal. And the last quarter is actually also really difficult to drink. Um, so yeah, that's it. Just my two cents on drinking. Don't drink with a straw because you can end up with too much air in your stomach, which is going to create gas, which is going to be painful to pass after surgery. So don't use a straw. The nurse at the hospital strongly recommended that I don't. So get a beaker, a mug, a drinking glass and find someone to fill it only three quarters. I've been out of hospital and back here in place for about 24 hours now and I'm okay. I've done a lot of sleeping. Jason's looking after me so well. So I've got lots of medication right next to the bed. Jason is helping me make sure that I'm taking it on time. He's here non-stop to make sure that nothing goes wrong, helping me get to the bathroom. I'm keeping log of when I'm taking medication and I'm writing everything down to make sure that I don't take too many but also not too few so that I don't end up getting terrible at pain attacks. Here's Jason trying to find us a movie to watch. Yeah, I hope you're doing good work there. Getting there. Yay! And there's San Francisco in the background. That's what I can see from my bed. This is my nurse. He's called Jason. And he works for free. Back to surgery recovery. I really, I don't know what I thought, but I thought I would be much more sick at this moment. I think I didn't think I would be able to communicate. So that's pretty amazing. I'm pretty... I mean, what I can't do is, is I can't just get up whenever I want to, to go to the toilet. I have to plan it and do it really, really carefully. And I need the help of my nurse. Don't go away. Okay, so Jason just said to me that I should um, probably make another video because before I was showing you how I'm moving up in the bed by pushing my legs into a bridge pose. So feet are parallel, push the feet down and lift the bottom off a little bit. I don't use these muscles. And so Jason was just saying, I should probably make a video in case I'm a freak of nature because I can also, I've just had open surgery here, right? I can put my leg up there and hold it there kind of for as long as I want. I don't feel anything, nothing here. So I don't use these muscles to lift my leg up. I think I'm using muscles here and at the top of my thigh. Maybe I'm also using some back muscles, but I'm completely fine. So when I'm showing you how I'm moving up in the bed, which I'll show you again now, because I can't just lift up because I just had open surgery, I lift my bottom, wriggle myself up a little bit. You get the idea, I hope. Press into my feet, knees pull away a little, but not much, mostly it's just everything pressure goes down and I move up a little bit like that so I use the muscles here very very little for that just minor I feel a little bit in the side muscles and that's it but maybe for you that isn't safe so before you try to do it put your feet parallel see how you feel before you do anything just hang out here for a minute Check it out. Press your feet down and see if you notice your back muscles engaging and see if just by pressing the feet down your sacrum and your lower back lift a little bit. Like I'm not lifting off yet, right? You can see. But if I press a little bit more, my bottom is still touching the bed, but I'm light enough to scoot up a little. So try that out, but first you just move one leg. I can't put my leg straight, there's something in the way. 
But put one leg up a little bit like this, see what happens. Let me just kick it out of the bed. So it's best for me if I have a bolster underneath my legs there. And that's also how I woke up in hospital. So either with a cushion or a bolster, like that. That's pretty helpful. You might not want to move as much as me. So this is how I woke up, with a cushion underneath my knees. And then just see, you know, lift like one knee up a little bit. And if that feels all right, you could just stop there. That's what I did in the beginning. I did nothing more. I might have just lifted my foot a little bit like that. Can you see it? And then let it down again. I might have lifted it a couple of times just to kind of try mobilize my toes. When I was still really out of it, that's all I did. I just moved my toes around a bit. Activated my ankle a little bit. Just little tiny movements. You know, even if it's just that much. And you can do it slower than me. Try the other leg. And you will engage your tummy a little bit, but not a lot. Maybe you can't leave your, move your legs up. Then just flap your toes. You know, move your feet a little bit side to side without even moving any part of your leg. Even this will help you get your body going. But for me, I realized I could do this quite easily. If I did it carefully, I could put my feet down. And freakishly, I can do that. I can't get out of bed by myself, but I can do that. It's crazy, huh? Yep. So be careful, but this is just my progress. Today is April the 26th. It is two days after my surgery. It is nearly midnight and I'm unable to leave the bed, but I can kick my feet up. Hooray! See you later. I just wanted to mention, in case you're wondering what this weird thing is, I think it's a kind of a pee pad for adults to protect the bed, but they had these in hospital and what this does is it protects the bed, let's say, it's not very glamorous is it, but in case I had a dribble because I can't get out of bed in time, this would protect the bed, but the other reason is I just had surgery and there is a chance that I might be bleeding right from somewhere and then the blood would go on this and not on the bedding. So that's what this is here for. I'm not sure, I think you can get them from normal medical supply shops. You might be able to get them in big pharmacies or they might be able to get them in for you. We might have been given one secretly from the nurse at the hospital. But I'm not telling. <laughs>